Hello. Right. Today, hopefully, I'm going to show you how I made this thing. Right. Um, overall sizes. Right. The length is basically what I can get is a piece of plywood. And the height is how long we have to get these bearing rounds. Uh, and that's it, really. Um, a lot of the dimensions of other things just really don't matter at all as long as the matching piece with it is exactly the same. Uh, so I took my piece of plywood and I cut roughly 60 mil strips out of it. Now I'm going to bring it over here. This is what I've got left out of one whole sheet and it is a 20 mil uh, sheathing plant. That's the stuff with the yellow edge and not the stuff with the green one because it's a lot stronger. So all of it is put together with housing joints and cross halving joints. Uh, a cross halving joint is that. There we go. And a housing joint is like that. But as you can see, these aren't held together with nails or anything like that. Um, if you put a screw in there, for example, that just stops it slipping around. It doesn't stop it. But it's strong enough on its own, and if you get enough of these put together, all it will square itself up. <clears throat> so I've fortunately taken this off, uh, and here we go. You see, I've got a housing joint over here, and I've got a housing joint here, and another housing joint. So, like I've said, this distance isn't important at all. What is important is that these are parallel. When I started off, I made this face here into a datum face. I ran two pieces of plywood across the plane to give that a flat edge. Then I put it on my chop saw just cut it off at each end so both pieces were identical and then I made a jig uh, to fit everything into my pillar riddle and make a 20 mil hole on each piece uh, that's going to be in exactly the same position. So this is a datum face where everything is measured off it. So there we go, that is completely straight. So if I've got a jig set up on my drill here, then it's up against that fence and it's up against that stop. So if I say it's on, there we go. Then I can do it over here. And then, if I turn it over, I can use the same date and face, the same stop, here to here, now those two holes <clears throat> are exactly the same distance that way from our data face and exactly the same distance from here. And we have two pieces, so we end up with two pieces that have got exactly the same holes in. These two pieces of plywood, they put a stop on the end of where the rail comes in and they're both equidistant. So if we put them against this framework here, then our rails have it exactly the same distance, are both apart and far off the rail. Uh, the same thing goes on for the bottom, right? which means that you're ensured to get parallel rails. 
The bearings are special polymer bearings which don't get dusty like the ball bearings which traditional uh, bars have. Once you've got the rails in place then you can put the bearings on, put them next to the plate and get a clamp on. Then you can just drill the holes straight through as they're going to go. It doesn't matter if it's skew or, you know, it doesn't, it, lots and lots of things in this project just don't matter. Fitting the saw, um, <clears throat> but I'm not sure where these brackets came from, uh, but I must have picked them up sometime, put them to one side, and thought, hmm, they're not going to come in for something, and lo and behold, they have. Right, so you can put a spacer in between your bearings that's the same width all the way along and all you have to do is attach that is hold that in between the bearing faces and uh, the foot uh, and then you can just tighten up the four clamps that hold down plate has a counterweight that runs up to some pulleys up here there we are right and back over here to the counterweight which at the moment is an old tin of cash on GTX but I'm having my friends at Freeset Metals sort me out a small weight that's about five kilograms. All the feet that's four at the front and four at the back have one of these set into the base of it. <coughs> this is an M8 threaded insert that you can get from Danlet. So I put these in uh, underneath together with an M8 bolt so it can be adjusted. The whole framework can be adjusted because if you don't get those, uh, if you don't get a level, then sometimes the movement along those bars is a bit restricted. I gave the framework a basic A-frame to make it to be able to stand up and then it can go any way you want. I put toggle clamps on the bottom so that it can be fixed to this rail here. There we go. There we go. And at the same point, it can be clamped to any part of the framework. For the base rail, I use this piece of aluminium that I got from 3D printing store in Joburg uh, and then I got these uh, from Gear Best in China but that allows me to stop and there and it didn't actually have one of these to start with uh, but I have put it in there and so I also got this is the sand steel ruler uh, stuck that on there and that gives me some degree of accuracy as to what size I'm going to cut. So I hope that answered all your questions and that you've enjoyed this video and uh, click like. Uh, any questions just let me know. Bye bye.